With the end of the cyclone season and the arrival of the southeast trades, it was time to leave Thursday Island in the Torres Straits. But first, we wanted to pay our respects by attending the dawn service and the parade on Anzac Day. ANZAC is an acronym that stands for Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. ANZAC Day originally commemorated the landing of the troops on the beaches of Gallipoli in World War I, but has since come to recognise all Australians and New Zealanders who served and died in war and on operational service, past and present, as well as honouring the suffering of those families left at home. In World War II, the Torres Strait Light Infantry Battalion was formed, and the unit was unique, being the only Indigenous Australian battalion ever formed by the Australian Army. They were spread throughout the Torres Straits and served as the Islanders' defences against Japanese air raids. Later, they were deployed in Dutch New Guinea, where they carried out operations against the Japanese occupation force. The battalion was disbanded in 1946, but the Torres Strait Islanders still provide security and surveillance to the remote parts of Northern Australia as part of C Company, 51st Battalion, Far North Queensland Regiment. gathered here to commemorate with great respect for our soldiers and young larrikans of the Gallipoli campaign of World War I. Spare a thought for those courageous young men, soldiers, who did not know what to expect. They say reality is made up of circles. However, in that environment, my guess is that they saw just straight lines, straight for cover from the continuous bombardment from above. Our visit to Thursday Island gave us the chance to appreciate the role played by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders in the war effort. To see the Islanders placing wreaths in remembrance of their relatives was a truly touching sight. Day, it was time to do some last minute jobs so we could get underway to sail to Badu Island. We really enjoyed our time on Thursday Island, thanks to the great friends we made. 
Raph, Jade, Mackay, Dr. Andrew and family, we can't thank you enough for your hospitality. A big free range sailing vessel. At the moment we're just sailing out, just under Hetzel. Um, the engine's off and we're just trying to pick up a mackerel because we're just skirting our way through a little bit of reef here. Still um, a bit early in the winter for a lot of the mackerel and the tuna to be back, but there should be a few residents around. That was so cool. We just had like four turtles saying goodbye to us from our departure from Thursday Island. Troy saw the turtle just go down on the sounder as well. We've got a leeway of 40 degrees here because of the current. So. Yep, we're steering 80 degrees before and we were only going 20. So we're in 12 metres here. The only, uh, we're sort of going like this. We're, we're not even being, we can't even tack. <laughs> it's just impossible. Like I'm pointing 150 but we're doing 200. So that means we're just gonna be going up and down in a straight line. So what we'll do is we'll just drop the pick here um, and wait for the tide to turn. Wait for slack tide. Yep. We've put the anchor down and though we've talked about the currents here in past episodes, it's worth looking at again to appreciate what a huge factor they are. It looks like rule is underway, but we're actually stationary. Another thing you might imagine is a strong wind against such a tidal flow and the dangerous conditions that could result. The islanders give the name Kulis and Gutard to the tides with or against the wind because they recognise that you have to work with the sea and not against it. As soon as the current slackened, we picked our way through the tricky entrance into the beautiful harbour of Badu Island. <laughs> We made it, it's the island of Badu. Um, okay, we've just got off the phone to Councillor Laurie um, and we're gonna go in and meet him. We just have to take care of the formalities of being welcomed here onto Badu um, and then we can go and have an explore. But we're also very excited because Laurie is one of the artists here that we, we really want to see his work. We really admire his, uh, his artwork that he's put out. So um, it's pretty common sort of knowledge that if you wanna go and visit a country, you, get, you seek permission um, you show your passport and you go. It's not quite like that, but here in the islands, they definitely want you to seek permission, okay? They, they sort of uh, administrate their own islands here and they are an independent people in there as they feel for it. So if you're gonna to come to the Torres Straits, you need to seek permission, get that supported by the islanders and then they will welcome you in. If you just breezed on in and just shown up, you're not gonna be welcome and you're probably not gonna have a very good time. But if you do the right thing, um, and you seek permission like they ask you to. They're very warm people and they will, they will welcome you and you'll have a great time. When we got on shore and met Laurie, he invited us to spend the day with his family at their beach camp on the other side of the island. As soon as we arrived, we helped the family put out a net and it wasn't long before we had a dozen mullet and whiting for our lunch.
Lunch. Lunch. Yes. Uh -huh. that's, really, like that's, that's, that's just within like that's five minutes from tight. setting the net. But yeah. That's brilliant. That's why you want to keep places alive. That's fine. Right. Can we carry one? Carry it. And then I carry a big one. Carry it. Laurie's going to show us cooking Come. on the fire as well. Yeah, nice. the fat yeah. gets through the Come. fire. Oh, nice. Can yeah. Can I carry it? Can I carry it? Can I carry it? Can I carry it? As you can see, like, you know, there's a bit of a brown coming up. Yeah. See, this is good because it's all in place, but if you're handling it the way I told you... It's yeah, you've got to just do it yeah. one side each. Yeah. What's that big one? There's that yellow fat lorry was talking about. Mm. They cook them whole without taking the guts out because the yellow fat's coming up through the flesh. Mm -hmm. Tastes pretty good. <laughs> Around the camp, we saw a number of sprouted coconuts, and they're one of our favourite foods, so we we're interested to see how Laurie opened them. We also learnt that the inner shoot makes a great snack. You can either eat that or eat this. It's like an apple. It's almost like the centre of a the farm, eh? It's a bit more tender. What do you reckon, Troy? It's good. <laughs> Take the first layer out. I took the second layer out of that one. Oh, that's so nice. Taste that. You get one bite. On Badu, the name of the foamy flesh found inside the sprouted coconuts is called muzu. This morning we have run out of yogurt so I'm going to make some more. We make it like mm, every three to four days and it's really easy so if you don't go to the shops all the time and you love your yogurt or if you want to save yourself some money then we can show you how to make yogurt with milk powder and you can also substitute this milk powder with fresh milk if you've got fresh milk at hand. The really important thing with making yogurt is to make sure that everything is really sterilized because you don't want any bad bacteria making bad flavors in your yogurt. Once people have watched this, they'll probably be a bit overwhelmed. Will there be some written information regarding this? Yeah. Quanti quantities, recipes, procedures? Yeah, so we'll write how we make the yogurt. Um, we'll write out our instructions at the bottom of the video. Okay, so we've put two cups of milk powder in. It's probably filled the jar about a third full of milk powder. That tends to work for us, so that's what we do. Also with those quantities, I found that on the back of your milk powder, it'll give mixing quantities but I always used to add another 30% on what they said, just to have a creamier yogurt. We're adding sterilized water, which I boiled last night. I've got 500 ml here. I think that'll be enough, but we'll see. So we're just giving this a shake to mix the milk powder and the water together. Okay, so we've given it a shake and we need to top up the water. I've just put another 200 mils in the jug. This is the same water that I boiled last night. 
now we add the yogurt culture, which is just yogurt that we bought from the store. It's the last of the yogurt that we bought from the store and it's still got the living, it's alive, it's got the living bacteria in it. If you're going to use yogurt from the store, just make sure it has the live active cultures in it, which is always written on the packet because it's the cultures that we're going to put in here to make our yogurt. And this is the thing, as people are making yogurt on their boat and they're far from the store, as long as they always use a clean spoon, they should have some clean yogurt to use at the end of the... Yeah, so this is a, this is a jar that I've got with sanitizer in it. So I've got the spoon sitting in a sanitizer and I'm going to use that to scoop the yogurt culture out. And yeah, as you're serving your yogurt, make sure that you don't put an infection into your yogurt um, while you're eating it. So make sure you always have a, like Troy said, have a clean spoon when you're using it for your cooking and serving out of the fridge. If you keep it in the fridge and you use a clean spoon, you won't get any other bad bacteria living in your yogurt. After we've made a batch of yogurt with the store yogurt, we will keep using um, the, we'll use the previous batch of yogurt as our culture to start the next batch of yogurt. Um, yeah, we probably get about two or three weeks, maybe more, maybe four weeks out of it. You only need to put a couple of tablespoons in uh, and that'll be enough to get the yogurt going. And we're just gonna stir that yogurt in like that. The yogurt bacteria are heat loving. They are very active at around 45 degrees. So we've got an easy yogurt container to make our yogurt. So all we, it's really simple. We picked it up at the op shop and it's made it really easy for us to make yogurt all the time. So the easy yogurt works by pouring boiling water into the bottom and then you sit your jar inside um, and the steam keeps the yogurt at 45 degrees for about 12 hours, which is the amount of time you need to make your yogurt. Now you don't need an easy yogurt container to make yogurt and we've made great yogurt for about a year with a thermos. We just stopped using thermoses because, well, we got a bit frustrated with them actually, the quality of them. I was, I was embittered actually <laughs> because my granddad and my dad had thermoses and they lasted their lifetime. Mm. And I think maybe the accountants have taken over at thermos. Yeah. And we have gone through a number of them and they've all lost their vacuum. Their vacuum seal within like a few months of having them. Within a few months. So yeah. they are trading on a good name yeah. and I don't think they're making a good product. It's disappointing because it was an Australian product, but now it was made in Australia, but now it's made in China. So. It's made in China and I can't... What have we gone through? We've gone through eight... Four. Well, no, because... four with me. Four with you. And so I had those ones that my sister got for Christmas and she got me a whole bunch of them. So if anyone's watching from Thermos, you've really let your brand down. Yeah, but if you have an old Thermos, like you know, one built in the 70s or 80s, that's probably still going strong and will be perfect for making your yogurt. So if you're gonna use a, a Thermos or an insulated container, get your milk on the stove and heat it to 45 degrees. Don't add your yogurt until you've gotten the milk to 45 degrees. Add two spoonfuls of yogurt and just stir it through and then pour the solution into it, the sanitised container that you're going to use. Um, and then that's it. Keep it still. Keep, keeping it still is more than important than you think, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we've, we've rattled our yoghurt and tried to make when it's moving and it comes we've, out kind of strange. Like cottage cheesy, it just goes weird. So you have to keep it still. Okay, so I've boiled this salt water. Just We just use seawater. And I'm putting it in the bottom of the, the Azio container. Just filling it to the line, a little bit above the first line in there. Now, this is a, as you can see, this is a reused glass jar. Easy Yo does give you a plastic container when you get an Easy Yo um, maker. But we since scratched that plastic container and we think it might be leading to infection in our yogurt. So we've just been using glass because it's easy to, much easier to sterilize. Like so, just lock the lid on, there you go. And then we've got to find somewhere secure in the boat where it won't fall over. Here in Badu Harbour, it's not too bad, is it? It's pretty Yeah, it's stable. good in Badu Harbour, but there's always somewhere you can wedge it in between things to keep it nice and still. Yep. That's good, so if we ever have to set off the EPIRB, then we can just grab the yogurt as well. Yeah. Nice. Right next to the EPIRB.